Hello everyone, welcome back to Trilby's Notes. So, I had no idea what to do. I spent a couple minutes just staring at doors blankly like an idiot, and then finally looked it up on a walkthrough. It turns out what you're supposed to do is put the painting under the door. Which is something that I thought about, because there's a substantial gap under the door where a painting would obviously fit, but the problem is I didn't know I actually had the painting on me. And when trying to look at your inventory, it says, how could I Trilby possibly have known what Matthew was carrying that day? So apparently you couldn't have possibly known what he was carrying, but yet you're supposed to know what he was carrying. Okay then. Anyway, let's just put the damn painting under the damn door. I didn't understand the word damn. Well, fudge you. I'm pushing the painting under your door, okay? Just give it back when you're finished. How dare you, sir! You intrude on my hospitality and insult my judgment? That's father. Get out of my house, you worm! I better see what's the matter. What the hell happened? They were having a perfectly pleasant conversation about a minute ago. Father? Oh, it's you. Father, what happened? I heard shouting. That old fool told me some rubbish about my figurine. Said the only tribe it could have come from died in slavery years ago. Actually had the nerve to accuse me of buying from a forger. I'm sorry, Father. What are you apologizing for? Where's that damn brandy? I've got it here. Give it to me. I'll go back to my room, father. Show me your painting. Father? You said you had a painting. Show it to me. I... I can't, father. And why not? Because... Because... Come on, why not? Out with it! Because... I give it to the boy behind the door. I see. Father. Go back to your room, boy. I have to write my diary entry. Y yes, Father. Strangely, the most disturbing thing had been Sir Roderick's reaction to Matthew mentioning the boy behind the door. In the past, raising this had usually provoked a violent rage or an instant flat denial. Matthew wondered what sort of anxiety was going through his father's mind. What was that? Father, what are you doing? Ah, is this when it happened? The apron's missing. Is a blade missing as well? I don't think so. Unless there was a fourth one. I don't believe there was. Open the door. What's inside? Matthew was confused by his own reluctance. He had longed to see what was behind this door his entire life. But now, given the chance... He was struck with fear. He peered cautiously through and saw a set of rough stone steps leading down to some kind of basement. I should have done this the moment you came into this world, demon child. May God forgive me for having a part in your creation. Father? What are you doing? Do you see what you've done? I didn't want to, I didn't want him to see this. Do you see what you've done? Father, no! Father! Father! Boo! <sighs> My apologies, dear boy, but I couldn't resist. You look so lost in that painting, I don't think you even saw me come in. What? I... What? Is everything alright, Terry? Yes, everything's... Everything's fine. It's just... For a moment there, I thought I saw... Never mind. Sialbun and I were talking about you after you ran out of the room. I said you seemed like something was making you... It seemed like something was making you terribly anxious. Frankly, I think that's still the case. I'm okay. Really, I, I am. Well, if you're sure. I was certain my mind was not playing tricks on me. I had been back there, in Defoe Manor, looking through the eyes of Matthew Defoe. 
I had seen the event that had created John Defoe. I saw his death at the hands of Sir Roderick, that terrible, violent end that would bring him back as that awful wraith. But somehow, seeing that event, it was clear to me that there was more to this than the ghost of one retarded youth. There had been something very wrong about that idol, even before it was used to destroy John Defoe. A name stood out in my memory. The Sea Angel, the name of the ship on which Sir Roderick had found that figurine. I now had a lead. Professor, do you know anything about a ship called the Sea Angel? You know, it's funny you should mention that name. There's a really old wooden chisel among the Defoe Manor artifacts. And the words Sea Angel are carved into the handle. Where's this chisel? Out on display in the convention hall, next to the dining room. What's all this about, Terry? It's nothing. It's just a little side project my clients want me to get into. Thank you for your help. No problem. Take care of yourself. Yeah, there's something very wrong with that figurine. What is this? Look... Oh god, right, how do I do this? Look... If I don't know the name of it, how do I look at it? Look... Right in fucking front of you. I don't understand the word fucking. Fair enough. Examine. The lobby of the Clan Wanbrin Hotel did its best to appear welcoming. Uh -huh. is, is that a key? No. Yeah, I'm sure I'm supposed to pick that up. What if I just say object? I don't understand the word. Oh my god. R red. It's it's red. Surely with the time period this is set in, that's not a key card. Okay. Um, I guess it's Dan. Right. I'm supposed to go check out the wooden chisel, I suppose. Not quite sure what it is, where it is, but let's just open some doors and see what I can find. Doka Zola. <laughs> There's the machine. I think it was a pub quiz machine. A piece of white card on the screen declared that it was out of order. Well, try to use it anyway. Even more than fully working order, I had far better things I could have been doing. Fair enough. It appeared to be locked, probably by a deadbolt on the other side. Let's go into the bathroom. Think of interest. Look in a mirror. I seemed somewhat pale, but otherwise fine. Okay. Given the things I've recently seen, that is no surprise. Use penis on... That is not penis. Use penis on toilet. I didn't understand the word penis. Damn it. Go to the bathroom. Use toilet. I had neither the need nor inclination to use the lavatories at that time. Okay, fair enough. The kitchen doors refuse to open. Okay, so the display's not there, it's not there. Oh god. Fuck, we're back here. Do I need to use the pills again? I 
I took another pill. Uh. Did it work? T take take another one. I took another pill. Okay, it's not working. I could keep taking them and then I'd die of an overdose. That's a problem. Shit. Shit. Oh. It's... That's back to being fine. Okay. Hold on, what if I actually try to leave this place? Yeah, before it just went in a circle when I went to the side, so where does it go now? Okay. <laughs> it's just like holes in the fences. The hotel's side and rear yards were enclosed by a high wooden fence. Can I look through a hole? Peering through the nearest hole, I saw a plain, almost featureless backyard with a lawn that severely needed a gardener's attention. Hmm. What if we do the same thing here? Yeah, same thing. And same thing here. Peering through the nearest hole, I saw a small enclosed yard with a workbench and tools. Okay, that's good to know. Workbench and tools. Could come in handy. And now we're back. Hmm. Let's look around. The hotel side and rear yards were enclosed. Mm, I could also see a fire escape running up the east exterior wall. another pill. Okay, hopefully he'll be back to normal by the time I go up. I'm hoping it takes effect when I go to a different area. Please, please. Okay, thank god. Alright, so there's gonna be a fire escape out one of these places. There's an ice spill knock. Knock, knock. I wasn't close enough. There you go, you doofus. There was no reply. Damn it. I would not have... It would not give when pushed. I saw no direct means of opening it. Hmm. Hmm, what if I use my lockpicks? Doesn't actually say it's locked, but... There was no keyhole, the fire escape door was electronically locked. Okay, electronic. Oh, and what is this? Is that a fire alarm? It was a circular white heat sensor, presumably tied to the hotel's fire safety systems. Okay. I've got pills and I've got lockpicks. I need a lighter. Perhaps that's what's on the front desk? Could that be a lighter? Perhaps it is. Let's, uh, nonetheless, let's keep going up and see what's up here. Oh god, what the fuck? <sighs> Maybe it's just stopped. What the fuck? I didn't do anything. I, did, I didn't do anything. Okay. I was going to say, maybe I should stop taking pills because I might actually overdose on them or become addicted or something. I'll try to use them in moderation. Okay. Wait, wait, did someone say something? Come in. Oh! Okay, whose place is that? Wait, is this where I just was? Or did I go up a floor? Uh. I think this is maybe the floor I was just on. I'm not quite sure anyway. Let's uh, open the door. Oh, okay, okay. Here I am. Excuse me, sir. I'm just going to use your phone. Predictably, the line was dead. Of course. A 
about... What the hell was the tool? Wood... What, what was it? Could you repeat what you told me about the Sea Angel? All I know is that there is a chisel amongst the Defoe Manor artifacts bearing that name. It's in the conference hall with the others. Right, need to find the conference hall. I don't see why the conference hall would be up here, but... I don't know. Maybe. I do want to explore around regardless, though. Oh wait, what did that say? This was my room. Even if there were someone inside, they would probably not advertise their presence by answering. Indeed. Oh, fuck. Chozo loved me. Stone thing? Bloodstained stone altar replaced the bed. Okay, let's get out of here. Oh, fuck, I'm still here. Come on, go away. Maybe I do need to take another pill. Let's keep going up. Bring her back. The stairwell was... Oh no, I've already seen that. Strangely, there was some kind of dismembered porcelain dummy mounted to one of the walls. Okay, at least it's not actually a person. It looked like some kind of porcelain mannequin, but with bits missing. I couldn't see how it was attached to the wall. Take dummy down? It was stuck firmly to the wall, and besides, I didn't want to carry that around. Okay, well, I'm gonna go back to the lobby to pick up what may or may not be a lighter. And if I'm not back to reality by then, I suppose I'm taking a pill. Okay, we're taking a pill. Okay. Is there any point in going up there now? Maybe. I don't actually know what's up there in the real version, but anyway, let's pick up this thing. Is it a lighter? <sighs> Apparently not. What? What is that? Dear God, I don't know its name. How do I pick it up? I couldn't have taken that with me. What even is that? What What is it? It's like four red pixels, a couple gray ones, and a white pixel? Alright, this is employees only, isn't it? Actually, let's look at the door first. Read the nameplate. A door behind the counter presumably led to the manager's office, while the front doors led to the hotel's front yard. Simple enough. Is there something sticking out of the painting? Is that a piece of paper? Is that like the wallpaper peeling? Um, take paper? It was a page from a religious book I wasn't familiar with. I hear enclose it with these notes. Right, so the name of the game is Trilby's Notes, and it looks like the, uh, what would you say, the perspective of this text that I'm seeing here is somebody giving a report. I hear and close it with these notes, Trilby's Notes. So obviously he stayed alive, because he stayed, he was alive to write this report. Victim, Victim 5, The Child. The Fifth Man, 
who desired judgment, was the child whose father held the carving of the slave. The prince came to him, and was at once rightly pleased with what he found, for the house of the child and his father already knew well the name of the king. Wait a minute. Whose father held the carving of the slave. The carving. Is it the figurine? And as the prince watched, the child was thrown down by his father, and broken with the wood of the prince's soul. But as the child's body, mind, and soul began to drift apart, the prince held them together, and he said, You are the child, and to you I grant power, for I see in you the potential that will grant my father, the king, his greatest wish. You shall be not of this land of technology, nor of the realm of magic, but of both, and thus you shall form the bridge. And across the bridge, the king shall come to bring his message to the men of technology. Through you, child, the bridge will come, and thus I name you the bridge keeper. And the prince touched the child, and he was the bridge keeper, and his three aspects were granted power so that his soul would join with the prince's soul in the wood of the tree. What the fuck? In the wood of the tree. Wood. Figurine is made out of wood. And the bridge keeper rose up and threw down his father and threw down his brother, and truly did they know of the name of the king. And into the house of his father went the body and the mind of the bridge keeper. What the hell was that? Okay, so where's this conference hall? The dude keeps talking about. I do, want, I do want to see what's up here in the normal version of reality. <laughs> Have I been on this floor? Yes, that's where my room is. Hmm. There's something here. Or there was something here. It hurts. What? What hurts? What the fuck do you mean it hurts? Look around. It hurts, it hurts, it hurts, it- What the fuck? Um... Okay. <laughs> uh, I was in the main stairwell of the Clan Bronwyn Hotel. Okay. Touch the wall. Why does the wall look strange? I wasn't sure how to. Okay. Look at the door. An open doorway was the only exit besides the staircase. Okay. Open it. The, store the door wasn't either stuck or locked. Well, let's hope it's locked. And try to lockpick it. I should probably be more specific. Lock picks, plural, on door. I should probably... Okay, whatever. Pretty sure that's not what you're supposed to do. Okay, where is this goddamn conference hall? It wouldn't be up. It'd be on the ground floor. But I didn't see it down there. Or if it is down there, it's locked. I mean, I suppose I could pick one of those locks. Is, is it supposed to be locked? I mean, he said it's just in the conference hall. It's not like he said, oh yeah, it's closed, by the way. Which is what I assume he would say if it actually was. And what the fuck is that? I'm seriously wondering if there's a way to pick up objects if you don't know their name. Do you seriously have to know what they're called to be able to pick them up? Because that's ridiculous. Well, 
Oh, that's not the conference hall. Dining room. Mm-hmm. Look at the doors. Whoops. Four doors. East led back to the hallway, west leading to the kitchen, some kind of unisex bathroom, and another large one whose purpose was not immediately obvious. Probably by a dead bone on the other side, so... Using a lockpick for my own work, there was no pick in the world that could unlock a deadbolt on the opposite side of a door. Okay. I'm thinking I need to get out... Oh, God. I'm thinking I need to get out the fire escape. I suppose. And I probably need this to do it, but I can't seem to pick it up. Maybe that's not a lighter. Maybe it's matches. I don't understand the word... Pick up. Matches. Only one match left. I took it anyway. Okay, thank God. Jesus. Why, why do you need to know... Why do you need to know the names of... Super pixelated pixel art things to be able to pick them up? I don't understand. That's ridiculous. There's... I mean, either you need to know the name of it, or... There's some other way to get the name of something that your character is looking at, but the tutorial neglected to mention it. And it really, really should have mentioned it if it is possible. Like, is there a way to examine something that is in front of your character without knowing its name? If you just type examine, it's the same as look around. It doesn't look at the object in front of you. The hallway was decorated identically, blah, blah, blah. Like, how? Anyway. On... F on... Alarm? There we go. Good enough. Oh, God. Well, it worked. I pushed my way through the door and descended the fire escape. Well, he wasn't kidding about this thing needing the attention of a gardener. Looking pretty bare bones. It looks like the grass just died here. It actually looks more like a chemical spill than grass, to be honest. To be honest. The hotel's rear yard was more or less bare, but for an old workbench and a fire escape running up the building. The grass was extremely patchy and poorly maintained. Presumably guests normally wouldn't be allowed here. Okay, what is that? That is a crowbar? Like, let's say I didn't know what this was, right? Pick up. I doubt I could have taken that with me. Okay, so just pick up doesn't work. That doesn't work. Examine object. That doesn't work. Examine thing. What is in front of me? Examine in front. You really have to know the name of it to be able to even interact with it? What the hell? Okay, pick up tool? I doubt I could have taken... Yes, you can. Pick up crowbar? I took the crowbar with me. Perhaps it could serve a purpose. Okay, what am I going to do with the crowbar? Um... What can I prize? What could I prize? I don't know. What about this window? It was dark inside. The room beyond was probably rarely used. Hmm. The crowbar was very old. I doubt it possessed the necessary strength to, strength to do that. Okay, so I've got a incredibly shitty old crowbar. What am I going to do with that? Hmm. Hold on. Could I perhaps push the workbench? That didn't make sense to me. Get on workbench? I feel like I'm supposed to move the workbench over and look inside the window. But that doesn't seem to work. Hmm. 
It was, looking at the bench, it was probably used for garden maintenance, tool storage, that sort of thing. Almost looks like there's a drawer in it. Is that a drawer? It was probably used... Um, so, I can't open the drawer that may or may not exist? No. Hmm. Open the window. I saw no reason to enter the building that way. Okay. Forget it. I should probably be more specific. Climb ladder? I climb back up the ladder and enter the same floor I'd come from. Okay. Lockpicks, pills, and crowbar. A particularly weak crowbar. I have an idea. Which room is that guy in? It's on the next floor up, isn't it? I should ask him where the conference hall is. It's probably the one that's dead bolted or whatever. But it doesn't hurt to ask. Oh god. I'm seriously gonna have some drug problems after this. Talk to Abit about Hall. I didn't understand the word Hall. Okay. About... Uh, talk to one of them about something. Talk about... Let me show this actually works, tool. Okay. You really do have to say talk to Abid about... I've already tried conference and hall. Conference hall? I might be misspelling that. Am I misspelling conference? Let's find out. Now I just made the screen go all white. Never mind, forget that. So I'm getting the impression that using an interpreter and having to type in all of your commands basically makes a game 20,000 times harder to do anything in. It's interesting. It is an interesting experience. I can't say I like it, though. Right, I'm gonna go try to pry open that deadbolted door, and if it doesn't work, I'm gonna look at a walkthrough. The crowbar is very old, I doubt- okay. Yeah, using a walkthrough. Enjoy, white screen! Ah, okay. Just looked up the walkthrough. You're supposed to take your crowbar into the other dimension. And use it on some boards. And to do that, you have to continuously alternate between screens until you go back to the other world. Okay, there we go. In fact, I think it's on this very door. Uh, is this seriously not what you're supposed to use it on? I'm supposed to use it on boards. If it's not those boards, then what the hell is it? Okay. I'm supposed to use it on something. Apparently this crowbar is made of paper. No, I'm pretty sure... Oh, wait a minute. Oh, God. It's so specific, isn't it? You're not, you don't use crowbar on door. Let me guess. You use crowbar 
on boards. Of course. As I had suspected, the stress proved too much for the ancient crowbar, which was bent to uselessness. I discarded it. Those, some of those don't even look human. Or perhaps they're just parts of humans. Trash bag. Let's look around. Judging by the smell, this room had probably not been ventured into for years. Desiccated corpses dangled from the ceiling, left to rot by some warped interior decorator. A sack, tied up at one end, sat oozing foulness in the corner. Ugh. Do I want to open it? Alright. Oops. I'll say bag. The mere thought of that, uh, of what that bag could contain, made me feel ill. Fair enough. Do I want to take it? Nope. Examine the bodies. More wretched victims of the alternate hotel. And their advanced age indicated that the dreadful sights that filled this place were by no means a recent addition. Okay, I'm guessing this is the conference hall, huh? Seems kind of like it. Let's look out the window. I could see nothing but darkness outside the window. Perhaps the area beyond had been walled in. Hmm. Let's look at the table. Grim metal tables stood below the corpses. I didn't even want to think about what crimes had been committed on those surfaces. Why don't I try to touch the bodies? It would have been wiser to let the poor souls rest in peace. Indeed. Touch the bag? Uh, no. Okay. Perhaps... If I take a pill and then go into the door... Aha! What do you know? Professor Chahal's antique show was as sparse as its small venue would indicate. A couple of tables were laid out with various trinkets, and a charred rocking chair was the centerpiece. And by the way, there's something that bugs me about the name Chahal. Wasn't that the name of, like, the starship captain in the previous game? Or something like that? I know I've heard that name before. Was his last name Chahal? Is it the same family? Anyway, I mean, I'm assuming by the end of this episode, perhaps we're going to launch the figurine out into space, since this is obviously taking place before the previous game, which was set in the future. Anyway, okay, what the hell is that? It looks like a soda. Examine soda? Yep, a bottle of Speedy Cola, a brand of highly caffeinated soft drinks, the bottle almost uh, the bottle almost full. Someone must have decided it was beyond the limits of their constitution. Take the cola. Whoops. I took the drink with me. Something told me it would come in useful. Let's look at the paintings. On the north wall were three framed monochrome photographs of scenes from around Clan Bronwyn Island, obviously placed by the hotel and not part of the exhibits. Examine chair. An involuntary shudder went through me as recognition dawned. It was the same chair from the living room in Defoe Manor, the room I had opted to sleep in for those five days. I couldn't even bring myself to go near it. I was pretty certain that John Defoe's influence was gone from the objects in this room, but still my irrational fears frustrated me. Not too irrational, I would say. Okay. Is that a painting? A broken painting? No, no, there's something there. 
I don't know. Anyway, this would appear to be the wood chisel. It was a very old make of chisel. Rusted and probably very fragile. As the professor had described, the words Sea Angel were carved into the handle. Again, I found myself inexplicably drawn to the artifact. My fingertips were already extending towards it, as if drawn by a magnet. Oh, I think we're going in. What's such it? A loud buzzing played in my ears, and my vision began to cloud as I reached over and laid my hand upon the tool. Somewhere in the Atlantic, July 25th, A.D. 1789. Holy crap. M. Bauda had been a great warrior. In battle, his skill was thought unmatched in all of Africa. He had, he had had respect, a great house, a slew of beautiful women, children to make any father proud. But through just one mistake, it had all been torn away. His mistake was in standing by his beloved king when the invaders from the coastal kingdom arrived. Now his great house was ruined, his women raped, his children murdered. And for Embuda, the worst fate of all, sold to the white men in exchange for weapons, shackled with his fellows in the hold of a slave ship. Embuda was strong, perhaps he could have lived as a slave, but then came the sickness. A simple fever. No, bout, no doubt to be gone by the next day. But the white men took no chances and threw him overboard. For days, Buddha drifted, waiting for the black cloud of death to descend. Having lost everything, he now sought only the embrace of the deep, a welcome end to, the, to a life betrayed. But the end did not come then. Voices, unfamiliar, speaking an unfamiliar language. And Buddha was suddenly terrified that the slavers must have returned. But he was as weak as a newborn and could not move or speak. Looks like we picked him up just in time. Don't know how long he's been drifting out here, but he can't have lasted much longer. Good lord. Look upon it, men. The greatest evidence we have of humanity's inherent evil. Never forget that men, sailors such as you or I, did this. Left this poor wretch to die. Slavers aren't sailors like you or I, Captain. No. I do not know how those devils can have the audacity to still call themselves human. Today, there is no pride in being an Englishman. Find our new passenger some quarters. Make him comfortable. Passenger, Captain? Every innocent who sets foot on my ship is a free man. Is there something about this policy you find questionable? Not at all, Captain. No, these were not the slavers. The ship was different. Less crowded with terrified black faces. There was anger in the voices of the white men but not directed at Embuda. Still frightened, but somewhat reassured, Embuda passed out. Days passed, and Embuda's health was restored. To have been rescued by the ship of these good white men had been a fantastic stroke of good fortune. He decided that it had been, it had been the will of the gods that he should survive, and that proper thanks would be in order. An idol, that was the answer. If he could just find some suitable wood and a sharp blade, he could carve the finest idol of his life. Oh god, I'm actually going to carve it. How could I truly possibly have known what Embuda was carrying that day? Okay. Let's look around. The Sea Angel was a small clipper, built for speed and the vast delivery of cargo. It was late in the evening and there were few crewmen on deck. Let's look at the barrels. One or two wooden barrels were scattered around for convenience, uh, for convenient reach. 
Let's speak with you. I don't know your name. And Buddha was talking to himself. Man. And Buddha could not understand the white man's language. Any communication would have to be non-verbal. Okay. You look like you might have tools. And there were several crewmen lending, uh, tending to the ship scattered around the deck. Despite the language barrier, Embuda could tell they were friendly and cordial. Hmm. Point at tool? All right there, laddie. Oh, I see. You want something to carve with. Here. The sailor handed Embuda a sharp, almost brand new workman's chisel. Just bring it back when you're finished with it. Okay. Nonverbal communication for the win. I, I don't understand why it says that. How could I, Trilby, possibly have known what Embuda was carrying that day? Oh, I don't know. Maybe because the fact that I just... Within the story, I just took an object? What? I mean... Yeah, I don't get it. Anyway. Okay. I need some wood. Climb the ladder. The hell is that say? O'Malley Shipping? Let's look at the box. A large crate was sitting in the shaft in the shaft of light, with letters stenciled on that Embuda did not recognize. It was cheaply made with poor quality nails, and some of the boards looked ready to fall off. Hmm. Okay, take a board. The wood of the crate seemed ideal for Embuda's intentions. He decided to leave it here until he was ready to carve the idol. Oh, okay. Let's look around. The hold was plunged into almost total darkness. With the memory of the slave ship and still recent, Embuda was unwilling to venture from the light. Fair enough. Use the chisel on... wood. With the chisel and the wood of the crate, Embuda could finally create his offering. After several hours, Embuda was very pleased with the result. A fine rendition of his kingdom's god of fertility and good fortune. All that remained now was to return the chisel. What the fuck? What the hell happened? The vision faded, and I felt myself being hurled forcefully back into the present day. That tall, thin creature. That black-clad ghoul. What was its significance to my predicament? Why did it appear again and again throughout history to spread death and horror? There was no connection to the idol's shape or in Buddha's tribal deities. The tall man was no fertility god. It must have been connected to the wood of that crate, somehow. There had been a name on that crate, and Buddha hadn't been able to read it, but I, looking through his eyes, had. O'Malley Shipping. Could the owner have been an ancestor of... Okay, now I need to actually figure out how to pronounce that name. How do I pronounce her name? How the, f how the hell do you pronounce that? Saibon? That's an I and not an O, right? Yes. Yeah, that's an I. Saibon? I'm going to go with Saibon. Uh, it was a flimsy possibility, but at that point, my only lead. I resolved to discuss this with Saibon at the earliest opportunity. Fair enough. I mean, O'Malley's obviously an Irish name. And apparently Saibon is also Irish, although I've never heard it before and it sounds bizarre. Wait, what the f- Is this another note? Who's leaving these notes? I recognize it as being from the same source as the one under the painting in the lobby. Victim 4, the slave. The fourth man who desired judgment was the slave, who had not been brought... 
Freyhorn's message, and who tormented the wood that was the prince's soul with a sharpened blade. The prince came to him, and he struck the slave down, and he knew the name of the king. And the prince said, Not one of your household shall I leave alive. Save, er, uh, slave, for thrice now have I brought my warning, and any who still fail to heed shall be named as fool, and judged most unworthy in our sight. Finally, I've... Oh, it's you, Terry. I thought you might have been the serving staff at last. Sorry to disappoint. And... Shit, what was his name? Actually, it doesn't even matter. Speak to man about... How do I spell her name? S-I-O-B... S-I-O-B-H-A-N? Where's Hypon? She said she was going to get a drink. I keep telling her it's not right for a girl her age to drink so much. But what do I know about young people today? That's right, old man. Okay, she went for a drink. Uh, where? This is the kitchen. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. I forgot to pick this up. I had to do a little edit there and load a save game for reasons, so I forgot to pick it up in this save. Okay, where would she be? She went for a drink. Wait, what the hell? Did I forget to pick this up, too? Uh... I guess I did. Alright, well, I've already read that. The child? Uh-huh. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, she went for a drink. Where? Oh yeah, the bar. There's a bar. That's usually where people go to drink, right? And the bar is... He oh god. Mr. Railby, have you seen any of the hotel staff anywhere? I'm afraid not. Hmm. Perhaps they had to go to bed early in these parts. Right. You know, it's actually kind of disturbing the fact that we haven't seen any staff members, isn't it? No kitchen staff, no serving staff, just the person at the front of the desk when I first came here. Weird. Anyway. I'm going to say talk to woman because I think that's easier to spell than Saibon. All oh, right. About drink. Um, I suppose I should speak about O'Malley's shipping. Give woman soda. I wasn't sure how to. Well, you're an idiot. Okay. About shipping? Do you know anything about the history of your family? I wouldn't be much of a history student if I didn't, now would I? Oh, I didn't know you're a history student. I'm researching my family tree as part of my diploma. Perfect. That's ideal. I appreciate this may sound like an odd question, but trust me when I say it's important. Did your family run a shipping company in the late 18th century? That is an odd question. But I do remember reading something about O'Malley shipping. Ah! I'd have to check my notes. I left them in my book bag. Could you meet me in my room in about five minutes? I'm in 2A, next to Apid. Certainly. I'll see you there, then. 
Perfect. I should probably save. I'm guessing something is going to go horribly wrong on the way there. Doors open. Come in, please, Terry. You have the papers? Must you always get right down to business? Come and sit down. Let's talk. How are you feeling? We were a little worried about you. I have these moments of illness. What do you want to talk about? Defoe Manor. Oh. It kind of interests me. I was really into the media coverage of the incident at the time. This client of yours, the one who wants the figurine, what does he know about it? W well, he has an interest in the occult, and there's some nonsense story going around about it. There's something about the idol being a vessel for an evil ghost. I, I wasn't really paying attention. Really? I don't remember hearing about that in any of the reports. No, you wouldn't have. It wasn't widely... Have you heard the story that Trilby was in the house? I could feel cold sweat drooling down my spine. Every fiber of my being was concentrating on not giving any outward signs of alarm as Saipon spoke of my secret name with wide-eyed enthusiasm. No one believes it, but Simone Taylor insisted it was true right up until... Well, you know. She says he... She says he saved her from the house. I, I think... I think that's a little far-fetched. That's exactly what Abed says. He says a ghost is one thing, but throwing Trilby into it just makes it seem silly. Truth be told, I don't think Abed believes in Trilby any more than he does ghosts. He's so... grounded in reality. A sensible attitude. Have you... have you always been an antique dealer? Whoa. Saipon, please. I came here to talk about... Let me put that another way. Have, have you ever been an antique dealer? I knew it. The outfit. The hat. Terry Railby. You're him. You were in Defoe Manor. And now you've come here to finish off the ghost. Saipan. I always knew there was something else in this world. That there was something better, more glamorous, just below the surface. Will you take me with you? Listen to me. There is nothing glamorous about what I do. I live in shadows that threaten to consume me every single day. And if you pursue this any further, you're going to walk straight into one. What... what are you talking about? Well, there is something extremely dangerous in the hotel. I don't know what it is, but... Oh god, no. Great, and I tripped. Hold on. I was a little too concerned about my predicament to do that. I can't fucking save? I'm not sure what I'm scared more about, this thing or the the thought of having to replay that entire conversation. Um... Get up! I tried to push myself up, but the muscles in my arms I gave only a quiver of fear in response to my urging. What do I have? D nothing that's gonna help me. Take pill. I was still too concerned about my predicament to do that. Okay, well, pff. I can't sit up. I can't take a pill. Punch, monster. Oh shit. Uh. <laughs> Saibon was out cold but uninjured. She would probably be safe on her bed while I continued my investigation. I'm sorry. Whoops. Well... <clears throat> Let's take a pill for good measure.
This was a completely standard hotel room equipped with bed, sofa, and television. Fascinating. What is that? Is that an alarm clock? I don't know what that is. Right. Um, well, here's our book bag, so... Let's open it. Under the circumstances, a Saipon probably wouldn't mind. There were a few textbooks, a half-empty water bottle, and a large folder marked O'Malley Family History. This, I decided, was my quarry. I flipped through the pages until I reached the information relevant to the 18th century, and read my discoveries out loud. The Liverpool-based O'Malley Shipping Company ran for three generations of the family in the mid to late 18th century until the loss of one of their clippers drove the company to bankruptcy. The owner at the time, Jacob O'Malley, placed the blame somewhat irrationally on a shipping crate, which family legend alleged to be haunted and that had been on the ship at the time. There are numerous tales of bizarre events surrounding the crate, and the story of the crate's origin is no less mysterious. It goes that a strange young man came to a carpenter's at the Liverpool dockyards with a very expensive-looking harpist cord, which he insisted be smashed up and the wood used for whatever purpose the carpenter desired. He refused to leave until the instrument had been utterly broken into its component parts in front of his eyes, and the wood sent to be made into crates for O'Malley shipping. When pressed for his name, the man identified himself as one Jack Freehorn. <laughs> 